Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Lurker Shows, Desolate Sirens, Peasants, Vassals, Hezbollah. I'm a useful idiot, and uh, today I'd like to talk about Lebanon, because uh, Lebanon will become increasingly a focal point in the Middle East in the uh, months and years to come. And um, right now, Lebanon is in the radar because they are, of course, next to Syria, and the violence in Syria is spilling over into Lebanon. And um, there's no surprise there. The destinies of uh, Syria and Lebanon have been joined for quite some time, and um, this uh, trend will continue in this, uh, in this disaster we have unfolding in the region right now. And um, there's no surprise uh, why these, the, these uh, dynamics would unfold the same in every country, because we have the, the same thing in Lebanon, which is a uh, mostly Sunni Muslim population uh, dominated by a minority Shiite government. And that's the same uh, situation we have in Syria. So uh, right now we have tensions um, that are similar in Lebanon that are uh, unfolding in Syria. And that is because we have the conflicts between the Shiites and the Sunnis once again. And that uh, lopsided ratio will have to right itself. And that's why we can look forward to another uh, conflict and a regime change in Lebanon as well as Syria and all over the Middle East. Um, the Sunni majority will correct the situation in Lebanon and topple the Shiite government. The Shiite government is uh, incidentally run by Hezbollah as well. So uh, Hezbollah, of course, and the Shiite government have their affinity with Iran and, um, and their connection with Syria. So uh, this is where this gets complex. So, uh, so the very same dynamics that are playing out in Syria are playing out in Lebanon right now. So we have a pro-Assad um, government um, of Syria supporters in Lebanon who are clashing, who are, of course, the Shiites who are clashing with Sunnis in Lebanon who are supporters of the opposition insurrection in Syria. So that same dynamics play playing out there. And then, of course, uh, just like Syria, we have this cast of bad characters involved, including the Israel the United States. Saudi Arabia and um, the like, uh, meddling in Lebanese affairs. Of course, uh, with Israel, it's targeted killings of prominent uh, Lebanese and Hezbollah figures, much like they do in Palestine. And um, and um, so uh, these these are all interconnected, and um, they will unfold in a similar way. And another reason why we know that uh, there will be regime change and more events unfolding in Lebanon is because they are another country that was on the infamous Wesley Clark list, um, a list that Wesley Clark pointed out was drawn up by the mil U.S. military and State Department back in the 90s, and it listed a, a string of uh, Middle Eastern countries whose regimes would be changed in due time, and Lebanon is on that list. So for uh, the reasons that I mentioned and the Wesley Clark list, uh, I guarantee you that uh, we will see some uh, big changes and big events um, unfolding in Lebanon in a, in a, in a certain amount of time. And, uh, of course, we have an election coming up in Lebanon, so uh, the events could change through the election mechanism. So we might see something akin to what happened in Egypt, where the uh, election was uh, manipulated, and perhaps a different candidate will uh, emerge in Lebanon. And that will change the dynamic there. But uh, a, con a conflict would still probably ensue because they need to sort, sort these issues out. And, um, and of course, we have these uh, drone battles going on between Israel and Lebanon as well. Hezbollah um, flying drones that they uh, got from Iran over Israel. And Israel's always uh, had drones over uh, Lebanon. So those, those tensions will still exist. And, of course, uh, we've had recent tension with uh, Israel and Lebanon. Um, with Hezbollah launching attacks in 2006 and then the impending Israeli invasion, which re, uh, resulted in a standoff. So uh, Lebanon is not in an enviable position, being uh, on a border with Israel on one side and then Syria on the other, and um, hardly, hardly a peaceful moment there. But uh, to give you a little background, like I like to do, because it seems like a, a lot of Americans are not that familiar with the history of this region, I'll throw out a little bit of a nutshell history about uh, 
Lebanon that will shed some light on current events because history um, will function functions well that way, letting us know how we got to where we are and uh, gives us hints as to where things are going. So Lebanon, like all, a lot of those countries in that region, including Syria, Iraq, and Iran, was part of the Ottoman Empire. And um, then during uh, at the end of World War I, France, of course, inherited a lot of the uh, ex-Ottoman Empire territory, and uh, the region of, uh, now known as Lebanon became a French mandate. And uh, so in uh, 1926, France finally created a, a Lebanese Republic, although still under French control. And then uh, in 1943, after France became occupied by Nazi Germany during World War II, um, Lebanon was finally given its independence. And uh, it was uh, mostly dominated by Christians traditionally, but uh, when uh, France redrew the borders, uh, they included a lot more Muslims in the population. And then, of course, uh, things got lopsided over the years in Lebanon because the Christians were forced to emigrate to other countries outside of Lebanon. And um, a lot of the Muslims, of course, uh, had a high birth rate. And um, so now the country is dominated by Muslims. So interesting fact there. That's one of the reasons why we've ended up with uh, the clashes between Christians and Muslims in Lebanon as well. And we also see that in Syria. So, uh, and then uh, the, the event that marks um, Lebanon's history the most is their civil war from 1975 to 1990. And, um, and this, of course, gave the opportunity for Syria to come in and occupy Lebanon. So not only did they have a uh, civil war that lasted 15 years, but it also created this, uh, this other symbiotic relationship between Syria and Lebanon, which is uh, dominant in the destiny of those two countries as we speak today. And um, the Syrian occupation finally ended in 2005. And, um, and then we see that uh, Syria continued to have a, a huge um, effect on the internal events in Lebanon. And they still do, do to this day. And that's another reason, of course, we see this spillover violence between uh, Syria and Lebanon. And uh, Lebanon has a, another added uh, ticking time bomb within their borders, and that's the fact that they, ever since uh, Israel moved into Palestine, there's been a flood of refugees, and um, refugees from all over the region that um, go into Lebanon, and this creates another um, level of tension besides everything else that's there, because they have uh, over 400,000 Palestinian refugees, and, and of course they uh, fill the ranks of Hezbollah, that's one of the reasons why we have a Hezbollah is um, the 400,000 Palestinian refugees. And, um, and of course they create a lot of uh, internal problems for Lebanon as well. And there's actually been clashes between uh, the uh, jihadis and the uh, Hezbollah and the government at different points in the very turbulent Lebanese history. Then we also have uh, 80,000 refugees from Iraq in the Iraq war and now we have 80,000 refugees from Syria as well. So. Uh, so Lebanon is an accident waiting to happen. And, um, but in the midst of all this chaos, interestingly enough, um, they have a fairly thriving economy in uh, Lebanon, although they, although they are loaded with debt. Their uh, debt to GDP ratio is fourth in the world, so they certainly have some issues to deal with. But uh, they get helped by the fact that they're the second largest per capita recipient of USA behind Israel. So. Uh, Israel is our uh, number one recipient of United States aid, and, and Lebanon is number two. And, um, of course, one of the reasons why all the big players are interested now, um, Israel and the U.S. and the Soviet Union and, and China and everyone else, is because of um, recent um, gas and oil deposits that have been found off the coast of uh, Lebanon. So that will uh, up the ante on uh, Lebanon's value amongst all these bad actors. So, um, so anyway, so there's a, a nutshell history of uh, Lebanon, a very nutshell history, and a um, speculation that we will see um, further unrest, perhaps a, a civil war, and um, a regime change, and a move towards another U.S. puppet government in Lebanon. It's only a matter of time. I'm useful idiot. Don't you be one too.